Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture video, we will talk about one interesting interview question. And uh, this question is usually asked for entry level analog circuit design aspirants and also for one or two year experience analog designers. The question goes like this, all of these three MOSFETs are in saturation. This we know it is a current mirror. Assume that they have the ratio of W by L is 1 is to 1 meaning that whatever current flows here the same current flows here and this structure on the right is a cascode structure the question is if this is the voltage here the voltage here if it is vx and it goes on reducing the first question is which mos goes into linear first out of these two mosfet which mosfet will go into linear first and the second question is explain the sequence of events Okay, so this is the interview question. So, so before directly giving over the answer, uh, I would like you to think about the solution and I am going to give you some time to think about the solution yourself. Okay, and uh, please note that the interviewer, uh, especially uh, for uh, especially for problems like this, do not expect you to write equations. Okay, so do not uh, go ahead and try writing some equations that would definitely be a very uh, negative point if at all you are going for an interview. If you go on writing equation that is definitely treated as a very negative point because you are not looking at the circuit intuitively. Okay, having said that let's come back here. I am going to give 10 seconds to think about this solution and I will start solving this problem exactly after 10 seconds. So you can start solving it right now. Your time will start now. Please take 10 seconds. Okay, I hope you all have given a try about what will happen and I'm sure few of you who uh, know um, what are the governing equations you would have easily got the solution okay now I will not directly answer uh, give away the answer I will just tell you what will happen if we uh, let's look at this VB VB is just a bias voltage it is fixed so the gate voltage is not changing here okay and note that this VB this VB this voltage is the voltage a drop at VGS plus the VDS of the M1 is it not so it is equal to VGS of uh, it is equal to VGS of uh, M2 plus the VDS of M1 that is what we know now if this MOSFET is in saturation now the assumption is all of them are in saturation okay in saturation one thing you must know that the current IDS only depends on VGS so it means that let's say whatever current this is carrying okay let's give some numbers let's say the current here is some I milliamps so in order to carry I milliamps the M2 will have set its own VGS okay and M1 will have its VGS decided by this so based on the current the VGS is set but note that for m2 vg is fixed it means only vs can move up and down okay so for this current to carry i current the m2 would have its one uh, vgs set on its own the vs is set okay based on that vgs drop whatever voltage will remain that will be the voltage across the m1 okay now let's assume that we are moving vgs uh, the the vx is reducing so what will happen this node voltage this node voltage is not going to move why because as long as this mos is in saturation the vds change okay the vds change is not going to affect the current so the vgs uh, the vds will not affect the current so the vgs will not change okay so the vgs is constant as long as this mos is in saturation now because this mo node is not moving and because the drain is going down the VDS is reducing and at one particular point when the VDS of this is lesser than the overdrive voltage this MOS will first go into saturation so this is the answer the M2 will go into saturation 
now the question doesn't end here what will happen next and how does it happen that is will be very interesting to note okay now what has happened now let us look at the second step m2 is in linear now okay now when the mosfet is in linear uh, and it has some current okay Okay, uh, uh, let me go, let me not go in that direction. Okay, let us take a different direction. Uh, let's assume that now M1 is still in saturation. Okay, M1 is still in saturation and it has a good, uh, it has a VGS set by it and it has a good amount of VDS. Okay, so it is perfectly sitting in saturation. Now, this MOS is carrying the same higher current. It is still carrying the high current because the current is decided by M1. It is M2 is carrying a higher current for lesser VDS. So, what will happen? For a MOS which is carrying, which is in linear, a MOSFET which is in linear, okay, and it is carrying a very high current, it will try to make its VGS also bigger, okay. Okay, so in order to accommodate this current, this MOS will need a higher VGS because VDS is very very small. And uh, because of that, this node will move down now because it needs higher VGS to carry the same higher current. So this node will start moving down. And once this mo node starts moving down, M1 will go into triode region. And once it goes into triode region, then it cannot copy the current. Even though VGS is same, the VDS are different, so uh, it will it will have a different amount of current. Now going ahead, uh, people will always ask you, can you draw it, show it graphically? Now graphically also it can be shown something like this. Okay. Now let's assume that uh, uh, in the sequence of events, this is our M. Uh, where is that MOSFET? M2. Okay, let's assume that this is M2 and this is M1. Note that M1 initially was carrying uh, some current. Let's assume this is I milliamps. Okay, now if you look at the graph, I1, because M1 was initially in, in saturation, it had, it was somewhere sitting here. The operating point would be somewhere here, right? Okay. Now graphically it can be shown that for M2 to have the same current, if you want the M2 to have the same current, if you want M2 to have same current, it must have higher VGS. Okay? So this curve must be something like this. Only then it can it can sustain the, the current. This can also be shown graphically. Okay, I would just repeat this point. Uh, once once M2 goes into linear region it can still carry this current I by going into linear and having higher VGS. By higher VGS means the curve would be something like this, right? If this is for one value of VGS, if uh, this curve is for one value of VGS, this will be for higher value of VGS. So this is how we can also explain this solution graphically. I hope this problem was clear in, uh, we, will, we will make many such uh, videos and you can drop your comments below. Thank you.